Hey guys, this is E, and this is my desk setup. Strap in and maybe grab a drink because this will be a long one. All the products will be linked in the description below and for many of the mentions, you'll most likely find a dedicated review on my channel. Without wasting any more time, let's begin with the desk. This is Autonomous Smart Desk 2 Premium, which is a fully adjustable standing desk. Constructed on a sturdy steel frame, it comes with four programmable height settings. The motorized foundation lifts up quietly at the press of a button, which is great for when I decide to stretch my legs. I went for the white oak top and gray frame because this color combo matches my drawers and wardrobe. And the overall theme in the studio, by the way. Cable management is okay, although not the best because I can't seem to find a decent cable management solution locally, so for now I'm resorting to IKEA's cable management rack, but I will most likely improve on that section of the desk uh, later on. The one and only monitor, which by the way fits a dual computer setup, flawlessly is LG's 38WN95C Ultra White. 144Hz gaming production beast. I reviewed a fair share of displays and this behemoth is my absolute favorite so far and for few good reasons. First off, its color representation capabilities are exceptional for video production and this being ultra wide delivers amazing canvas for video creators where there's plenty of real estate for all the tools one might need. Next, the size of this display eliminates the need for a dual monitor space, hence making it perfect for compact setups like this one. And for those, by the way, who rock the M1 machines that support only one Thunderbolt display. Also, this is a 144Hz curved display, which paired with my new PC is more than what I can ask for, delivering a phenomenal immersive experience. Now, just a side note, after using the this actual LG curved display for a while now, every other display feels weird to me as if it's bent backwards towards my face or like sort of like you're viewing something from a wide angle lens. Very weird experience. Anyway, this display is a no brainer and an absolute recommendation. My workstation is the tiny M1 13 inch MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. These new Macs with M1 are exceptional and I couldn't be happier being able to work off of this portable machine and handle complex 4K edits, intensive graphic projects and more with ease. With so much internal power and a battery life that you can simply forget about, I don't need more for now. The laptop is raised on Rain Design's M stand, which is beautifully crafted out of a single piece of aluminum stand that raises the laptop and also acts as a heatsink by cooling it. I've had this silver version for probably 10 years and I absolutely love it. Now, the second machine in this setup is my new budget PC, and what can I say? This is perhaps the most beautiful PC that I've ever had. This build is special for few reasons. It's a budget PC that is no slouch that is purposefully put together to serve as a gaming machine and nothing else. Second, this IQ Unix case is one of the main reasons to make this build because for the first time in years I fell in love with something so aesthetically pleasing and minimal and last but not least, it was built in collaboration with my friend Dimitri from Hardware Canucks who helped me pick the parts and put it together. We actually shot the entire build, which I'll link uh, here and in the description below in case you're interested. In that same video, by the way, you can also find more details about the parts that we chose. But in the meantime, I'll be sure to put a link to this gorgeous minimal case in the description below. The speakers on the desk are by Kanto, model number YU2. These are powered speakers, which means the amplifiers are built in. The sound that these small speakers produce is truly astounding. The heights and mids are unlike anything I've ever heard from desktop speakers, especially in that small size. Crystal clear mids and highs giving impression that the music is being played live in front of me. Stereo separation is excellent with zero vibrations. Lows, of course, are compromised and that's because of physics, but they don't lack bass and I find them ideal for my taste. Now, if bass by any chance gets that important to me, Kanto provides excellent just as aesthetically pleasing plug and play subs. If I don't want to annoy anyone around me when I do video edits, I always resort to my headphones, which are the AirPods Max. Despite being heavy, they are by far the most comfortable headphones for my big head, and the sound that they produce is just my cup of tea. Now, after my blindfold headphones test, I'm afraid 
to rate headphones because I was blown away by the results and the fact that sound quality is absolutely and truly subjective. But the AirPods Max are definitely my go-to headphones. On the back of the desk, on a Rode boom arm, I keep my microphone of choice, which is Sennheiser's MKH-416 shotgun mic. This is an expensive mic, but I consider it an investment because it is here to stay. And this being a microphone used in movie productions, you can get an idea of its potential. This has been my video production mic for two years now, and for the first time, I decided to double it as my meetings mic as well, because who wouldn't want to flex on meetings Sounding like Matthew McConaughey in a Cadillac commercial, you know what I mean. To run this amazing mic for both my video recordings and meetings, I purchased an Evo 4 audio interface, which is a magnificent 2-in, 2-out USB sound card with phantom power. Evo 4 comes with preamps offering 58 decibels of gain range and 113 decibels of dynamic range. Musicians can also plug in their instruments using the dedicated ports and record instantly. My favorite feature of this device is the Smart Gain mode, which determines the input level automatically, helping me avoid clippings. To keep my laptop in clamshell style, I had to resort to an external camera, and although placing a mirrorless camera sounds tempting, I didn't want to ruin my Zen space. So I did what every average consumer does and purchased a Logitech Stream Cam with little to no research. I know that there are probably way better options out there, but honestly, I didn't care that much. To my surprise, this full HD camera is very nice when it comes to resolution and quality. The exposure is a bit too bright for my taste and there might be an easy fix should the Logitech software decide to run on my M1 laptop. Nevertheless, I am happy with this tiny camera because first of all, it looks aesthetically pleasing, especially in this light color and fabric-like front and the fact that it has a built-in mic making it great for an all-in-one meeting solution. If you follow my newsletter, you might be familiar with my struggles with USB-C docks. And after many attempts, a few destroyed MacBook ports and motherboards, the kind people of Otherworld Computing or OWC jumped in and helped this setup by sending over their Thunderbolt dock. This dock adds three Thunderbolt and four USB ports along with Ethernet, audio and a card reader. The Thunderbolt 4 port provides 90 watts of charging power and a lot of functionality and style to any setup. Although it looks gorgeous on the top and the addition of a glowing logo that changes upon power and connection, I made the choice to tuck this dock underneath my desk to reduce the clutter. Now, if I were to have only one minor complaint about this product, it would be the fact that the laptop has to be plugged in up front, which in general is absolutely logical, but not as nice looking for more inconspicuous installations like mine. I've worked with old WC products before and they stand behind my recommendation for their goods, including this dock, which works great with M1 setups. Also underneath the desk, in the vicinity of the dock, I have stuck a 4TB Toshiba hard drive, which I use to offload my project files. Honestly, there's nothing special about this old school spinning hard drive, which soon will have to be replaced with a new one again. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe, because why not? Now, let's move to some more compact and just as useful items. On the left of my right speaker, I keep my new favorite Nomad product, which is a MagSafe mount that nests the OEM Apple MagSafe puck. This mount is designed to precisely fit the MagSafe charging cable, and since it weighs quite a bit, I can be sure that this thing is going nowhere when I lift up my phone. Machined from a solid block of stainless steel, this thing matches any decor, and it's timeless in design, and I absolutely adore it. My current favorite mouse pad is by Delta Hub and it's called Minimalistic Desk Pad. It has anti-slip material that prevents the pad from moving around and the soft fabric on top makes working and mousing on this desk extremely pleasant. Plus, it adds this additional layer of completeness and style to the desk setup. Another Delta Hub product that I'm currently testing is something called Carpio. And this is the second version. This is an ergonomic wrist rest that relieves the usual pressure of the wrist and on paper should help in the long run, especially for people with carpal tunnel syndrome. Now I can confirm that at the moment, but it feels very nice and forgiving to the wrist. The mouse that I'm currently using is by a company called Glorious and gamers are very familiar with this brand. The model number 
of this mouse is oh and this is my first high performance ultra lightweight wireless mouse and a gift from a close friend of mine this mouse in combination with the 144 hertz monitor changed my perspective of computer experience and despite not being able to set it up properly on my mac and pc having to switch the dongle between the mac and the pc i'm not sure honestly if i'm gonna be able to go back and use any heavy mouse again. The keyboard that I'm currently rocking is the IQ Unix F96 Knight Edition. This is a high quality mechanical keyboard with cherry brown switches that comes with a full aluminum enclosure. It is a 96% layout RGB backlit with USB-C. It is definitely one of the most badass looking keyboards, especially with these blank tops and the letters neatly printed on the front side of the PPT caps. I chose the wired version because normally such type of keyboards don't last that long. And I prefer to have to think about one less device that needs charging. On the left side of the keyboard, I keep an Apple trackpad. This trackpad is only used on certain occasions, but when it is, it comes in very handy. And in most cases, I use it to move around between desktop spaces. When dragging files between apps and timelines, it becomes especially handy. Underneath the laptop stand, I keep my favorite Nimbus Plus controller by SteelSeries. This controller is one of my favorites because it is extremely ergonomic and it's built like a tank. I use it to play games on my iPad and in most cases, I use it to control my teleprompter. And finally, the chair that ironically pushed away the old famous Herman Bilerian body is this IKEA's Marcus chair, which I will most likely use from now on. As much as I love the Herman Miller chair, this five times less expensive chair by IKEA seems to be the more comfortable one for me. And it is definitely a chair to recommend to most people who look for a versatile and ergonomic office solution. Now, going into details and covering my IKEA drawers will make this video too long. So I'll just give you some space to take a glimpse at what I keep inside and how they are organized. If you have any questions about any of the items, be sure to list them in the comment section below or ping me on Twitter. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the top right playlist, which holds many of the products individual reviews. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.